Talk about the key elements that you want in any pond design. Whether it's large or small, these are the things that you want to build into your pond. So first off, let's talk depth. You want to have levels of varying depth. And this is because you want deep emergent plants, you want shallow emergent plants, you want borderline wetland um, edge plants, and then you want terrestrial plants. This gives you maximum diversity in plants, maximum diversity in insect habitat, um, and it also allows you to have a phototropic shallow layer where tons of um, sunlight and growth is going to happen, as well as a deep zone, not only for overwintering fish, um, but also the deeper the water is, the higher the pressure on the water is, that o uh, oxygen molecules inside the water don't get released out as gas vapor. So the deeper you go, the more oxygen holding capacity water has. So now let's talk about the next thing that you really want to have, in the pond, which is oxygen infiltration. Tumbling mixing zones are crucially important in a pond. Both animals and plants will perform respiration. It's true that plants perform photosynthesis, but the roots of plants perform respiration and they need oxygen in the water. Even more important, the bacteria that lives in the pond like I always say, the, good, the line in the sand for good guy and bad guy bacteria is are you um, aerobic or anaerobic? We want aerobic water because we want aerobic bacteria because if we go inside this pond, as well as the animals and plants that are in the pond, um, we want to be, have, we want to have aerobic bacteria entering our skin pores, you know, if we accidentally drink some water, which this is going to be actually very clean water. Um, we want to have um, off that aer aerobic bacteria and microbiology coming into our bodies. Because this is what we have evolved with, evolved alongside, you know, for the last 400 million years or so. Tumbling, you can see all of the oxygen that's being put into this water. In nature, rain hits the top of the highest elevation uh, mountains, runs along the rocks, and eventually hits into uh, soil. It'll run downhill, but eventually it'll collect into lowlands, where it slows down and sinks into the ground, raising the ground table up. Eventually, the ground water level gets above the soil water level and springs pop back up. Water traveling underground is crucially important. So one thing every pond builder forgets to do or doesn't know to do is build a giant underground reservoir of water. Doesn't matter how big your pond build is, if you're doing a tiny little backyard pond, you should have a section of it, roughly a quarter to a third of the total volume of the water, be held at any point underground in an underground water holding tank. This gets this mimics what nature does, and it gets the water outside of the sunlight. This helps keep algaes down. It helps maintain a balance in the microscopic plants that are being carried into the water. Now, as the water flows, it's going to pick up debris that, be, that is deposited in, whether it is soil carryover from where it runs over top of water until it eventually goes underwater and then percolates up through the water picks up soil particles, those soil particles will settle out, leaves will come in, and what we want in a pond design then is to filter that sediment out. Ideally, filtering it out into plant material which we can harvest. So a wetland filter is where that comes in. 
Every pond should have some kind of filter. Many have a mechanical filter, but a wetland filter takes it to the next level. Okay, so as far as pump setup, um, because our pond is fairly deep, we have one that's drawing suction off the deepest part of the pond because that's where it's gonna be oxygen starved the most. That's this here, it goes to a, a pump over there and then comes around underneath this waterfall, underneath the, around the wetland. Actually, I think it comes under the wetland, way, way, way down, pops up and then goes up to the top waterfall. So one of the pumps is this big one and that's our biggest pump and that's feeding the waterfall. Down here after the negative edge this acts as a skimmer box essentially concentrating all the flow and pulling debris over the edge where I can it'll collect in here and I can pick it up. It'll kind of fall down and it'll uh, probably hopefully collect down in here but it'll find its way in different pockets. This is the underground reservoir and there's two pump bowls down there. So I have two pumps. One actually goes to the wetland and one goes to feed the waterfall to make the waterfall bigger. This lets me turn on a small pump or big pump if I want a big party pump and then I can save energy if I just want to run a minimum water, waterfall for oxygen. So this one pump feeds into the wetland and this wetland, um, I'll show you, uh, um, photos of putting this thing together and it's basically a giant pit. Um, I'll, I'll explain it actually when I do the photos. But the idea here is that we pump the water in through the bottom and it goes through uh, various layers of rocks, bigger rocks and then progressively smaller rocks. The surface area of all these rocks is where bacteria is, gonna, uh, is going to populate and colonate and then the plant roots, this will fill in um, as these plants get uh, more mature and the plant roots will then also feed on all the nutrients. This is a gigantic filter, much better than a mechanical filter because nature does stuff a thousand times better than an engineer could. And that's coming from an engineer. So the wetland plants themselves, um, there's marsh marigolds, uh, corkscrew rushes, we've got watercress, we've got hutunias, we've got bloody dock over there various grasses. I'm going to be adding in sweet flag just to get a vertical element in an edible. Um, the pond builder actually picked all these out, included horsetails which are invasive here. So I, the horsetails are for the vertical element so I'm going to swap those out for sweet flag. I had to pick them up from somebody else. Um, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to get the horsetails. Uh, but everything else is great. Um, and even the horsetails are fine as long as you can contain them, but I just know here they'll spread. Now this is actually like an interesting part about uh, slow spread and sink water. This water is being pumped up through roughly, I think it's around six feet or so of rock and gravel uh, and large boulders to prevent the smaller rocks from getting down in. So the water's percolating up through all this and the roots are cleaning it all out. And then the, you know, because of the volume of the water is being injected in from this pump, the water level rises and then it slowly overfills. So even though it doesn't look like it, this water is actually kind of flowing and you can see where it breaks level and the current breaks right here at the choke point, which kind of gives a really nice, a nice optical look. I kind of really like that. You actually have, because this waterfall is so powerful, you, you have some of the ripples coming in here but the net flow is absolutely out of this system it's kind of actually doing a neat little mixing in here and the idea is also that the water inlet is all at this side of the pond because the water outlet is down at that side of the pond and then also at the bottom of the pond here in the deepest part so that really gets maximum flow and turnover of all the pond water back down into the underground reservoir where it spends half of its life outside of uh, sunlight and this really helps keep the algae down. But this wetland filter is um, a critical and very, like this is 
probably my favorite part of this, despite how beautiful the waterfalls are and what an amazing job the builder did on the waterfalls. But this is where the life and activity happens. This is where the fertility is going to get collected and removed and put into plant material. This is the very exciting spot for a horticulturist and a permaculture designer, um, especially, you know, trying to build diversity. I finally have an, a, a really good source of uh, oxygenated wetland um, biomaterial that I can use in, in compost. My water system that I've designed has nothing even close to what this is going to be able to produce, especially when I put fish in the pond, get that nitrogen flow into the pond so that the plants can take all that nutrient out of the pond. This is going to be very, very valuable for me. Okay, so let's build a wetland filter. Enjoy these progress pics that will show you exactly how to do your own, whether it's big scale or small scale. The user scene here spreads the flow of the water out and the riser allows you to drop a sump pump in there and clean out any sediment that collects at the bottom. The aqua blocks provide both the structure to hold the rock that's above it but also the void space to hold water. 